your PRS? 950. 950, thank you. I always forget because there's so many. There's 950, 350. Oh, this is a really unique device. It's an e-ink with a touch screen. Um, again, mimicking the cool iPad, the iPod, and everything else. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, it's so cool. This is the latest technology. It's in black and white. What's with that? It's based on e-ink technology. E-ink technology is the closest thing we have in consumer electronics to actual print. <coughs> it's not the same. It's really, really close. And the way I love to describe this device, it's kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch. Now, in a book, you even a cheap paperback, if you zoom in on the print, like the letter S, it looks fairly much like a, a smooth brush stroke. Now on this device, when you zoom in on a ooh, ooh, oh, it's good information, <gasps> fun. Oh, anyway, sorry, I get distracted. Anyway, on this device, when you zoom in on a letter, the, how the e ink e works, when you zoom in on it with like a magnifying glass, it looks like tiny little bits of sand that are kind of bunched up like a sand castle to create a letter. So it's not exactly flush like a brush stroke where it's super smooth, but it's extremely close. There's just tiny, tiny, tiny little ridges. So it's much easier to read than, say, a computer screen, an LCD-based screen, which I'm going to talk about later. Not make fun of, but talk about. <laughs> um, and why people really love these devices, because, it, again, it's the closest thing we have. And why is that important? When you read a book, the mnemonic processes and cognitive processes in your smart brain are processing these words and letters. Now, on like a computer screen, like an LCD screen, why are we, why are we so tired after a two hour session on InfoDesk? We're like, oh, my brain, so tired. I can't remember anything I just did. There's a reason for that. Your brain is looking at these letters on the computer screen, and they look flush. They're not. They're tiny little blocks, these pixels. They're tiny little blocks. If you look at them up close, the letter, well, on a book, it's nice and smooth. But the letter S on the computer looks like this. Your brain is working overdrive, pardon the pun, uh, is working overdrive to trick yourself into thinking that it's smooth. Your brain is working harder. Thus and so, whenever you're on the information desk and you get off there, you, you've done a bunch of searches, and you're like, what did I just, I can't remember what I looked up today. I did all this stuff, it was great, I know I did something. Can't remember what I did. It's because your brain is working so hard you can't memorize or remember everything you read or searched on a computer. That's why this e-ink is very popular and why it's really helped e-readers kind of meet that point where it's like, oh, this is great. And e-reader, e-readers like these dedicated e-reading devices have been around for a while. Late 90s, they kind of popularized, but they were like a thousand dollars. So, and even then it was very pixelated. It was old school in the 1980s, you know, pong, beep, beep, technology. So it really wasn't that great. People were utilizing it as a necessity. They were traveling a lot, couldn't carry a lot of books. Then all of a sudden this e-ink technology came around and also the price went down. And, oh, wow, this is great. I can read it on the beach. This is really cool. You know, I can download it. This is, this is awesome. I can, I can read whatever I want. It's really easy. And the battery life is awesome. Hence, that's why you're going to see a lot of these e-readers around for a while. Um, but again, there's those options. There's so many options out there. But for, for someone that really loves a dedicated e-reader, these are great devices. Because all it does is really read books really well. The only, down, the only downside about this device, uh, the Nook and some others, it doesn't have a really big brain. You can't directly download, literally just by itself, untethered, no, no wires, haha, I like a magician. You can't directly download an ebook from the library to this. You have to download it to something that has a smart brain, i.e., a computer, then transfer it over. Now, this thing can count 1 to 14. It can do that. So, when you transfer an ebook, and we're actually going to do an example here, when you transfer an ebook to this device, it knows, oh, I have 14 days, yay, 14, 13, 10, 11, 10. It goes down. After that, when, you're, when your ebook that is on this device, after those 14 days, what it does is it locks up. A tulip closes. The file literally stays on there on this device. It stays on there, you just can't open it. It's like, ah, I can't open it, ah. <laughs> so, that's where this is a little different. And again, these devices, you have to know every single thing about these devices, but that's one thing about these dedicated e-readers that's a little different than many devices you'll see out there, um, even though yeah, there are a lot of those e-reading devices. This is so, when you when a customer asks, oh wait, I didn't finish this book, it's, I'm not done with it. Like, I'm going to read it again. Unfortunately, there's no automatic renewal. So unfortunately, it's not like a physical library in that sense. You can go online, press renew, ha ha. But we can tell the customer, oh, it's really simple. You can check it out again, download it, transfer it, and that little tulip just goes, bing, ah, 
on the beautiful flower, read me again. Wonderful. Yes. Basically what it's doing is transferring those rights. It's not actually transferring it another flower. <coughs> it's like, oh, I'm already there. Oh, you can open up again. Ding! So again, it's like these locked keys. And we're going to talk about DRM at the end. That's the part you can fall asleep if you want. Okay. Focus. Actually, it's really good information. So again, to give you an example, so let's pretend a customer has that, this Sony e-reader. And again, this is actually really cool. Let me show you a couple examples here. Ooh, caught. And again, I strongly encourage you. And after this, by the way, awesome. Woo -hoo. Yay. And again, we're going to do a little more hands-on on with this. And again, this is a really quick, quick question. When I, when I turn the page, there's that jerk. Do you kind of see that? Mm -hmm. How the e ink technology works and why it's so efficient for the battery. Again, it's almost like it's repositioning all its sand. Like the Etch-a-Sketch. Okay, I'm going to change it and you know put a bunch of letters on there. That's a great way to kind of understand how that e ink technology works. It doesn't take very